These are those spaghetti thin cables that are included with most indoor TV antennas, such as rabbit ears, flat panel antennas, and even these bat wing style antennas. These thin cables seem to be the standard, if you could call it that, for indoor TV antennas nowadays. So I thought we'd have a closer look at it and compare it against some real coaxial cable. And I don't want to bash this wire too badly because it does serve a purpose. But if you're having indoor antenna reception issues, then this certainly could be a contributing factor. All right, so here's a length of that thin cable that I took out of an old pair of broken rabbit ears. Let's have a closer look at it. So there's not too much to look at here. What you have is basically two pieces of wire. One is uh, bare copper, and then the other one has a jacket around it. And then those are both encapsulated inside this outer jacket here. And that's basically it. And that is what these indoor antennas are mostly using as coaxial cable. And then on the other end, they just attach a RF connector here. For you to connect it to your television or converter box so this is really looks more like speaker wire than anything and probably if you use the heavier gauge speaker wire that would probably protect your tv signal more than this and here's that wire compared with some pieces of actual coax cable here we have rg6 dual shielded cable and this is RG6 quad shielded cable. And you can see the difference is very obvious how spaghetti thin this one is compared with the RG6 dual shield. And you can see that the RG6 quad shield is even thicker and offers even more in the way of shielding to protect your TV signal. And looking at a piece of coaxial cable up close, what you have is the outer jacket here and then underneath that is this braided shielding, which offers the first layer of shielding for the signal. And then next you have this foil wrapping, which I peeled back a little bit here. So you can see this plastic, almost like a tubing, that's called a dielectric that actually separates the layers of shielding from the inter uh, center copper conductor here. And this is what carries the TV signal here. And these are just here for protection and shielding. So the more layers of shielding you have on your coax cable, the more uh, signal loss is prevented. And uh, this is the same stuff here, um, RG6 dual shield, same idea. And then taking it a step further here with the quad shielding, the quad shielding actually has uh, two layers of braided shielding and two layers of foil. And the way it's uh, the way it's layered is you have a layer of braided shielding and then a layer of foil. And underneath this layer of foil is actually another layer. It's kind of difficult to get open, but you have underneath this another layer of braided shielding. You can see some of the strands here coming out. And then underneath that, another layer of foil, and then that white plastic dielectric along with the center conductor. This offers four layers of shielding, which is really going to protect your television signal and minimize any signal loss, especially in long cable runs. Now, for most instances, RG6 dual shielding cable is probably fine if you're not going to be running too long of a cable run. When you start getting into cable runs of 100 feet, 200 feet, then you really want to step it up to RG6 quad shielding cable because that is going to minimize loss over long cable runs and give you as much signal as possible at your television tuner or digital converter box. And once again, there's no comparison with this tiny spaghetti wire that most indoor antennas use. No comparison compared to using real actual coaxial cable, which provides 
some protection from signal loss through multiple layers of shielding. Not only do these extra layers of shielding help to hold the signal, especially during long cable runs, but they will also prevent or at least minimize any outside electrical interference that might be disrupting your TV signal. And you just don't get that kind of extra protection using thin wires like this. And the outer braided shielding on coax cable also acts as a ground wire. I think indoor antenna manufacturers should just install these RF connectors here, like you see on this outdoor TV antenna. And that would allow you to connect your own proper coaxial cable to the antenna, but that would probably just end up driving the cost of TV antennas up even further. They even sell lengths of this thin antenna wire, although I wouldn't recommend buying any. And RG6 quad shield cable can certainly be more expensive. But one tip I would give is look around at thrift stores or secondhand stores that sell construction materials. Sometimes contractors will donate partially used spools or rolls. Like this one I got here, I got over 600 feet of quad shield cable for only 20 bucks.